Howdy, Jacob here. Today we're looking at the Cheesecake Factory, a restaurant that sells everything you could possibly think of. 1.9 billion market cap, 2.3 billion enterprise value. I presume there's a lot of capital leases there. We'll look shortly on the balance sheet to see if that's true, but probably not too concerned with that debt. Growth is surprisingly more than I thought. I'm sure they're putting down a little bit more stores and then maybe getting the same store sales roughly with inflation. But been around since 1972, so I don't know if we're going to be seeing that much growth here. Uh, prospectively, gross margin down a little bit, operating margin down a little bit from 10 years ago, with earnings per share relatively flat. They do pay a dividend. It's not substantial, 50%, a little over 50% of their current earnings per share. Which we'll see what that is in relation to free cash flow. Pre-COVID had great return on invested capital and no debt, and then or I think they just changed the way capital leases were um, supposed to be shown the balance sheet here as well. But good return on invested capital went down quite a bit um, to mid single digits. So nothing really to brag home about. Balance sheet shows that happened between 2018 and 2019, the capital leases here. So 56 million cash on hand, 470 million long term debt. Capital leases of 1.2 billion. I mean, we need these capital leases to, um, or they use capital leases for, um, for their physical location of the Cheesecake Factory. So no, no concern there. But that 470 million dollars. Let's see what that is in relation to free cash flow. It is. I mean, if we look over here, less than, you know, that's about two and a half years. But recently, they have not been producing as much free cash flow. And so, okay, where is this happening? Okay, so, yeah, cash flow operations is just down from what it was a little bit ago, 10 years ago, with slightly higher capital expenditures. And so the company is is reinvesting back in themselves and making some acquisitions, which you can see through CapEx going up. But the free cash flow is down. And in relation to cash flow, their debt is not a huge concern, but you know, definitely should be thinking about paying that down shortly. And so right now, if we start making some assumptions here, maybe inflation growth, let's say make an acquisition with some of their free cash flow margins here. I mean, they're not great. I'll probably say maybe they don't go quite back to normal but they get close let's do three four share repurchases one percent would be about 19 million to offset that would be about 50 million that's fine 50 million well they do pay a dividend that's 53 million so maybe not actually let's just say they offset stock based compensation that's going to be 28 million with their cash dividends. Let's not increase that. That's already 80 million dollars more than they've made the last three years. But assuming they get back to these type of margins or at least closer to them with their increased revenue, I think that that should leave a little bit of money to make acquisitions to exceed inflation growth and then for paying a little bit of that debt down as well. Our, our PE right here, I don't, let's go a little, I just don't think it's fantastic. So I'm going to go a little bit lower than market average due to this poor return on invested capital. Margins aren't crazy. I mean, I think people say cheesecake factory, but I don't know anyone that like still goes there a lot. Like, I don't think it's like a, you know, everyone who gets a drank at whatever it's a coke or something I, I just don't see everyone saying oh i'm going to cheesecake factory instead of you know local spot or something so i think i'm fine with these assumptions and right now it needs to fall almost in half to get to the return we're looking for here so i'm just going to be patient hope you enjoy the video and have a great rest of your day thank you